Hey there guys, I'm Danks564 and well, it's been a while since I made a Shadowrun lore video. And there are primarily two reasons for it. The first is that I, well, I'm a lazy bastard and uh, I was lazy. And the second one is that I want to include the overview of the Big Ten in this video, like every single AAA corporation, but I wasn't able to find a proper way to do so. Mm, so what I'll instead do is I'll cover corporate courts, like its divisions, uh, its jurisdiction and so on this video and then I'll make short videos covering each AAA corporation in more detail since I don't think making uh, two sentences over you would do justice to AAA mega corporations. So with that said, let's proceed. But before we start discussing corporate court itself, let's go through its ratings for the corporations. That is, what exactly is single A, double A or triple A ratings and what corporations need to do to get them. So, before corporation gets a single A rating, it's unrated, and, well, it doesn't mean that the corporation is small or not influential, but it usually means that its influence is very localized, and if it has any representation in the nations other than the, its country of origin, it's probably very insignificant. Because to get rated, corporation must be multinational, and I'm not talking like having a mom-and-pop shop on either side of CAS and UCAS border. It must have significant presence in multiple nations and still have a pretty good revenue. Think of our modern day multinational corporation, something like, I don't know, Hyundai or Sony might be good examples of higher tier single A corporations. At this point, they fall under corporate court jurisdiction and they are allowed to have their own defense force, but they do not get extraterritoriality, however, so they still need to play nice with the government. Once corporation gets a double A status, it finally gets the price of extraterritoriality. It means that, as far as governments are concerned, double A corporations are effectively independent nations, with their own laws, currency, citizens, and so on. To become double A corporation, corporate court must be sure that the corporation in question can manage all the responsibilities that go with extraterritoriality. Such as, well, as I mentioned before, issuing its own currency, supporting its own citizens, ensuring its own safety, and so on. And at the same time, it still needs to generate good amount of revenue. The size of AA corporations can vary a lot. In my opinion, real-life Google, with some minor tweaks, could easily be lower to your AA corporation. On the other end of this AA spectrum, you can put mega corporations that are bigger than most powerful countries of today. A good example of such corporation would be Proteus, a long-time rival of Sutter Group that at a certain point was able to piece off Ares so much that they went to war with each other. Granted, they got shot from orbit for their trouble, but still, they were capable of fighting corporation with most powerful military in the world. And finally, there are AAA mag corporations. These are the members of the corporate court. They make rules for the other corporations to follow. These corporations might not be the largest or the strongest, but they certainly are the most cunning ones. Because you can hardly brute force your way to the top, with some of the most powerful corporations opposing you. In 2075 there are 10 mega corporations on the console. They are also known as the Big Ten. In alphabetical order they are RS Micro Technology, Ads Technology, Evo, Horizon, Mitsushima Computer Technology, or MCT for short, Neonet, Renraku, Sutter Group, Shiwasi, and Wusing. And since I mentioned extraterritoriality, we might as well talk about that. Like, for example, why do governments even recognize extraterritoriality of corporations and how exactly does it work? Well, after Shiwasi decisions, corporations started to lobby, or more accurately would be to say lobby slash bully governments to accept business recognition accords. And why would governments even adopt the accords, I hear you ask? Well, you have to keep in mind that it all happened during very unstable times. With Vitas and Awakening, governments were on the brink of collapse. And quite often, without corporations' involvement, they probably would have collapsed. By adopting the accords, governments would recognize corporate court rankings and all that comes with it. Like, say, extraterritoriality. They would also recognize Zurich Orbital Gaming Shaft Bank, right to control New Yen. And corporations in return have to follow certain regulations, such as follow certain rules about production and distributions of controlled substances. More often than not, it doesn't mean prohibition, usually government just takes a cut from the sales. 
also AA corporations still technically have to pay taxes to the government. They are still located on the land that belongs to the government. But with good accountants and lawyers they can easily reduce taxes to pretty much nothing. Uh, by the way, for the property or territory to be considered extraterritorial, corporations must own that property or territory. For example, if IRS leases a warehouse from a single A corporation on the Seattle waterfront, this warehouse is still under jurisdiction of UCAS, not IRS. Speaking of jurisdiction, with extraterritorial megas it's pretty much straightforward. They make up any rules and laws they want on their own territory. But what about corporate court? Corporate court regulates, well, uh, corporations. Shocker, right? Basically, if AA corporations or above has some sort of an issue with other corporations, it can appeal to corporate court. And in theory, court should justly resolve the issue. In practice, however, corporate court is run by other corporations, and more often than not, the actions that will be taken should benefit the majority of the corporations on the court. Corporate court also is responsible for metric standards and protocols. The corporate court metric authority is the body that is directly responsible for that, and Great Overwatch Division, aka God, is one of the metrics authority divisions that is responsible for metric security. God is sort of a metric centerpole, if you wish. Um, corporations have certainly their own metric security, but with metric crimes, it's usually that they are committed in more than just one jurisdiction. Corporations might not always like involvement of God, but usually they do not interfere with it too much. It's not a great idea to mess with some of the best hackers in the world with virtually unlimited resources and that are backed by most powerful corporations. But if some corporation will decide to be stubborn and will not follow corporate court decisions, corporate court will retaliate, of course, and uh, retaliations can vary from sanctions to full-on destruction of the corporation that was stupid enough to go against the Big Ten. To elaborate on that a bit, corporate court can reduce the credit rating of the corporation, which will worsen the conditions at which said corporation can take credits from the financial organizations, or it can outright cut the said corporation from credit line altogether. This works pretty much like credit rating of countries in the real life today. Court can also impose trade sanctions against corporations, reducing or eliminating ability of mega to purchase certain goods, which can be quite devastating for an unruly mega. Alternatively, court can fine the offending corporation. Fine can be anything from new end to transferring whole corporation divisions. Corporate court can also sanction military actions against corporations, so if one corporation has an issue with the other, it can ask for permission from the court, and with its blessing it can safely take actions against its opponent, without fear of retaliation from the court. Real-life equivalent would be UN Security Council authorization for military action. And finally there are Omega orders that were never actually used. This orders allows any mega to do whatever they wish against the offender, which pretty much guarantees its destruction. Talking about corporate court, we should definitely mention Zurich Orbital Gemeinschaft Bank, or Zog Bank for short. Zog Bank is an issuer of world primary currency, New Yen. It also is responsible for implementing policies and rules to keep the world economy afloat and all the other stuff you might expect from the largest financial organization in the world. Zogbank is controlled by the executives from the Big Ten, but there are only nine seats on the board of the bank. This means that once every nine years, one of the members of the court loses its say in what bank is going to do and what policies it will implement. And for all nine years, while they are on the board, Preparing for inevitable off-year is one of the priorities of the appointed board member and the corporation he is representing. I should also mention Zurich Orbital Habitat Space Station. It is an HQ for the corporate court, and all the justices reside there. Uh, justice, by the way, is the title for the representative of the Big Ten in the corporate court. Habitat's location is its primary defense, its orbit is heavily guarded secret, and even if someone would be able to determine its orbit, it has large range of defensive weaponry. The space station is probably more vulnerable to metrics attacks than physical ones, and I don't mean that it's vulnerable in any way, by the way. Uh, all the traffic in and from the station is heavily encrypted with multiple dummy satellites posing as the station, 
uh, with the biggest and brightest from the great Overwatch division responsible for the protection of the station. I'm not saying that it's impossible to hack into the space station computers from the outside, but it's like not impossible to kill a great dragon. Unless you're a great dragon or an immortal elf of great power, you're probably gonna need an army to do that. Well, I guess that is all I have to say about Corporate Court. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Any suggestions would be also welcome. And as I said in the beginning, in the next few videos I'll talk about every single AAA Mac Corporation individually. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. Goodbye!